November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. I'm continuing the series on instrument mastery, and in this video, we will cover the vertical speed indicator. Now, I don't believe that the VSI is really necessary, but it's sure nice to have. And I'm covering it now because we've just been discussing the other pedostatic instruments, and this is the last one is that uh, part of that system. So, what's a vertical speed indicator? Well, it's kind of like what its name says. It indicates your vertical speed in feet per minute, or maybe meters per minute if you're flying somewhere metric. But of course, if you are, I can't legally prepare you for those tests, so why are you watching? I'm glad you are, though. But let's go ahead with the vertical speed indicator. It's quite simple, really. It's also a barometer of sorts, and it tells you whether you're climbing or descending. If its needle points to zero, then you're level, unless there's a malfunction, and I'll get to that in a minute. It's got an aneroid inside, just like the other static instruments, but on this one, the static source is piped directly into the bellows to give it an instant pressure reading. Then, the casing is vented through a tiny little orifice that the air flows through at a predictable rate. This uh, case is designed to leak. Yes, you heard that right. And this metered leak is a test question. This causes the aneroid to expand and contract instantly as your static pressure changes because it's directly connected to the static line but the case lags behind a bit because of that little metered orifice that the air has to flow through. So when you begin to climb, the pressure inside the bellows drops, but it gets squeezed by the pressure in the case. But this pressure in the case is also leaking out, trying to equalize with the pressure in the bellows. And as long as you keep climbing, there's always a pressure differential, and so you're gonna show a climb. If you climb faster, the differential pressure is higher, and so the needle moves more. This pressure lag causes the linkages and gears to move the needle on the indicator. And as long as you're going up or down, the pressure lag remains, and the needle stays where it is. Now, how is this instrument really useful to you, though? Can't you just use the altimeter to get a sense of how fast you're going up and down? Well, yes, you can, but it's not as sensitive, and it doesn't give you a direct readout of your vertical speed. And the VSI is a very nice thing to have. So how do you use it? Well. It's nice to know kind of when to start leveling off after a climb or descent, to avoid abrupt control movements and passenger vomit. You typically start leveling off at 10% of your vertical speed. So if you're climbing at 1,000 feet per minute, you're going to start leveling off 100 feet before your target altitude. Simple, isn't it? It's also used to sense the rate of change in altitude. If the needle is rising or falling, then your vertical acceleration is increasing or decreasing. And this will be useful to you when you do your unusual attitude recoveries, because the goal, of course, is to get the needle back to zero. You're also going to use it during your climb out, if you need to hit a specific climb gradient to clear obstacles. And I'll cover climb gradients and things in a separate video. You're also going to use it during descent and approach, to make sure that you have a stabilized descent rate. I typically use 500 fit per minute descent rates. Um, and before you start to taxi, just make sure that it very nearly reads zero, and if not, just make a note of where it is, and that'll be your zero. Of course, you might want to check it again right before takeoff. The only problem you might have with the VSI is a block static port, and if that happens, your VSI will read zero, and it'll stay there. It's an easy way to diagnose a block static port when you're certain that you're climbing or descending. And that's really about it. Uh, there's not much to this instrument like there is with the altimeter or the airspeed indicator, but make sure you go check out those videos if you haven't already. This concludes our discussion of the pedostatic instruments, and next we're going to do the gyroscopic ones. I hope this video helps you understand the VSI and how to use it skillfully. Now you'll know what you need for your FAA exam. So go ahead and subscribe so that you can be notified when the next video is out. It's free, and stay with me on 121 Point Mike.